Okay, I get it. We all want to remember everything we learn. And it's just frustrating to spend all of this time reading books, watching videos, reading articles, to just end up forgetting the information when it matters the most. And so well, no wonder memorization techniques have become like this god amongst the study tools. But you see, there's a problem, because as good as those tools are, they really do have a time and place to be used. And what you're able to remember and what you know are actually two different things. But in my experience, most people don't see their difference. Just they don't they just see them as one. So that's why many students just grab a book and immediately when they start reading, the main question becomes, how can I remember this information? And so they start doing flashcards or doing no taking notes, review later. Like that becomes the main focus. And all of those tools are great. I'm not gonna say they aren't, but before you start doing any of those, you have to do first a very important step. Without it, all of those strategies become kind of useless, kind of pointless. So, well, in today's video, I'm going to tell you what exactly is that step, why memorization techniques, why the focus on memorization techniques has become detrimental to your learning, and, well, what can you do about it? So, let's get to it. Okay, to explain my case in the best way I can, I'm showing you a sequence of 12 numbers. And let's say these numbers are meant to represent a sequence of facts, a series of facts, such as 12 different symptoms of a given disease, such as heart failure. So what do most students do in my experience? They just grab this list and they start maybe jotting them down, maybe doing some flashcards, any sort of way to memorize the content a little bit better. And the thing is that by doing that, they can be successful. They can acquire the knowledge, they can remember all of those numbers and in the test they can do, they can perform really well. So in their heads, knowing and memorizing have become sort of the same thing. But they're not, because although you could remember each and every one of the facts, you don't know anything about what's underneath those facts. Like you just remember them like as if they were random numbers. And they're not. They have an underlying formula. And with that simple mathematical formula, you obtain each and every one of the facts. That's why I'm saying that memorizing and understanding is are two different things. And I know people, when I show this example to them, they say like, of course I would have focused on the formula if I if the formula was displayed, but it wasn't. But the thing is that it's almost never displayed. Like the reasons behind things are almost never shown to us. And sure, there are exceptions. Like I'm sure there are still resources and books and teachers that make sure to explain the how and the why behind everything. But that's becoming exceedingly rare in today's world. All of our education system, our schools, our universities. So for example, if you take the USMLE, which is like the biggest medical exam across the world, well, how do people prep for that exam? Starting with the first aid. The first aid is this 900 page book of facts. And I think we can all agree that trying to memorize one formula is far easier than having to juggle 12 different random numbers in our heads. And yet not everybody acts as if that were true. Because again, we just obsess with the facts. For example, we're, we're reading heart failure and we find a list of, of symptoms. For example, peripheral edema, kidney injury, dyspnea, confusion, hepatomegaly, jugular ingurgitation. And what do most students do? Well, they make flashcards. Well, what's the problem? Again, you can do that. You can learn medicine through this uh, strategy, trying to memorize everything but it's far easier just to think, just to deduce those symptoms, which is what I typically do. So I just think about it. Okay, heart failure, failure of the heart. What's the heart supposed to do usually? To get blood from the veins, push it to the tissues through the arteries. So failure means it's not doing its job. Okay, so blood won't reach tissues. Which tissues need more uh, blood? Well, the brain and the kidney. So consequently, kidney injury and the encephalopathy, delirium, confusion, depending on severity. Because it doesn't reach the, the, the arteries, it's getting pulled in the veins. So how can I see that? Okay, well, the veins get engorged. So that's why I see jugular ingurgitation. Okay, if they, the blood stays very long in those veins, it can start leaking into tissues. So paramegaly, so for example, peripheral edema. And as you can see, I came up with each one of the facts of the symptoms without actually having to remember the symptoms. I just deduced everything through the name of the disease. Additionally, by learning in this way, you have an extra benefit, which is that you can go outside of the facts. Like, for example, if I were to ask you, what are the numbers? 
perfectly, you could answer that. But if I were to ask you what is the next number in the sequence, there is no way you can answer that unless you know the formula, unless you put attention to the underlying principle. The same thing happens with heart failure or, or diseases. For example, if you just think for a second and you think, okay, like the, the blood pools in the veins, in the liver, in the extremities, but it also pulls in the in, in intestines, right? Like the intestines have um, a venous circulation. So by this logic, they should have intestinal edema. And intestinal edema probably causes lack of appetite. And you'd be right. Lack of appetite, anorexia is a symptom of heart failure. And it's not included in the table. But you can figure that out by thinking. So you can go outside of the facts. And even in the very heavy memory-based uh, topics, like for example, names of enzymes, when I speak to people that know a lot about biochemistry, they, I ask, hey, how do you remember all of this stuff? Well, I just learned the common suffix. So if, the, if it says this suffix, I know it does this action. So I just have to remember, does this action to whom? To whom, to which molecule? And it becomes quite easier. So to be clear, I'm not trashing memorization techniques. I do think they're useful, they have their place, but I do think that many people abuse them. And many people just use and just rely on memory to learn the content because they know that if they repeat the same subject enough times, they'll grind it into their memory. And again, that's problematic. There's no real learning there. You need to process the information. If not, well, you'll rely solely on memory. Whereas if you just train yourself to think properly, to deduce, induce, reason your way through the content, you'll set yourself in a path where memory has very little to do. So I don't know, let me know if you want uh, another video showing you exactly how I think you should learn, like how is this processing thing really supposed to go, and I'll make it. But for now, thanks for tuning in, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. She's a Mona Lisa.